It's a hot day here in Palm Springs, California, October 7, 2019. Here's what you can expect for the month of October. Continued rate cuts, continued injections of billions of dollars into the repo market, and positive talks with the trade negotiations. They're gonna do everything they can to drive these markets up. Expect to see these markets surge on all this news. The whole thing's propped up, it's an illusion. Again, rate cuts, repo market injections, and positive trade talks with China are gonna drive these markets to the moon. Dow Jones was down 95 points today. As China says in a report, they're reluctant to agree to, agree to a, a broad deal. Now, in my opinion, as I've said in the past, I believe that China does not want a deal. I believe that their intention is to wait this president out into 2020, hoping that he will not be reelected. Uh, so I, I think that we do not see a deal uh, in 2019. And I do not believe that we are going to see a deal uh, in 2020. Um, this president is talking tough about these negotiations, but this president needs to start getting tough. He needs to stop worrying about what's gonna to happen to the stock market uh, if he decides to get tough with China. Um, I applaud him for standing up, but he needs to go all the way here against China. If we do not stand up to China right now, China is going to dominate the world. They want, to, they want the world reserve currency. They are dominating the world right now with manufacturing. They're dominating the world militarily. Um, they have the biggest bank in the world. They're, they're hoarding massive amounts of gold. Uh, their intention is to dominate the world. Um, and if we, do, if we do not step up and do something right now, uh, they are going to do that. I mean, just look uh, at, at the islands that they built in the China Sea, uh, their hypersonic missiles that they're building. Uh, their intentions are to pass uh, uh, the United States of America. And if this president doesn't get tough uh, pretty soon, uh, America is not going to be the world superpower that it once was. I believe that this president will enact a ceasefire with the tariffs over the holiday seasons in order uh, that the markets don't suffer, that um, the economy doesn't suffer. And I believe if we're truly in a trade war, if we're truly gonna stand up to China, there is no ceasefire. He has got to put the pedal to the metal and really stick it to China. This is a trade war. People are going to suffer. Business is going to suffer. The economy is gonna suffer. The markets are gonna suffer. And if we're not willing to do that, then we might as well turn everything over to China because China will be the world superpower. They are willing to make a sacrifice. They're willing to feel the pain in order to get what they want. Is America willing to do the same? Trade talks with China will negotiate this Thursday in Washington, D.C. Expect the same old thing. Um, there will be no agreement, but they will spin some kind of positive outlook on it in order to continue to push these markets up. As we're being assured that everything is okay, repo usage rises to its highest level in a week. This morning, Monday morning, New York Fed announced that it had accepted $47.05 billion in collateral in its latest repo operation. But everybody's telling you and I, everything is okay. Nobody on the media talking about this. And if they do, it's for about five seconds. Eight term repos start tomorrow, size between $35 billion and $45 billion. This is an eight term repo. Tuesday, the 8th, they're ready to inject $45 billion. Thursday, the 10th, another $45 billion. And Friday, the 11th, another $45 billion. These are the minimums. Uh, the Fed is ready and willing and able to inject 75, 100 billion, uh, whatever they have to do if there's trouble. Tuesday the 15th, they'll be injecting 35 billion. Thursday the 17th, 35 billion. Uh, Tuesday the 22nd, 35 billion. Thursday the 24th, another 35 billion. And Tuesday the 29th, another 35 billion minimum. And remember now, uh, this whole repo operation uh, will go to November 4th. So things aren't as good as many of your friends and family members, the media are telling you. CNBC today, um, 
the, that 50 year low in unemployment isn't helping worker paychecks. It's very interesting. Average wages have the same buying power they did 40 years ago when you account inflation. That's really sad. You know, another question I have is they say that there's, you, you know, 1.2 million jobs that they cannot fill. There's, there's more jobs than workers. And if there's so many jobs, how come we aren't seeing real wages? How come we're not seeing real wage growth? You, you know, we, we hear that, oh, you know, wages are up this month, you know, 2.6% or, you know, 2.8% or whatever it is. Yet we see the cost of living. Every time I go to the grocery store, things are up more than 2.8%. Um, I'm paying $4 minimal now for regular gas here in California. Cost of living is accelerating rent, mortgage payments, uh, auto payments, you name it. Interest on your credit card is skyrocketing. Um, yet we have all these available jobs, but how come we're not seeing real wage growth? How come we're not seeing real wages where people have real buying power? And one of the reasons is most of these jobs, again, are part-time their service sector jobs, you, you know, pedicurists, manicurists, massage therapists, Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Starbucks coffee makers, uh, waiters, waitresses, these jobs that pay 10, 12, $14 an hour, you know, uh, in and out hamburgers, I think they're paying $14 an hour. Um, this is not going to sustain the US economy forever. And as people keep getting more and more tapped out, we're going to see things cracking. We are beginning to see the cracks surface. Payroll data and business surveys indicate hiring slump, weak growth, and profit decline. That's on Zero Hedge today, not a positive sign. Uh, this is an interesting article right here, also on Zero Hedge. Student car loan surge most in three years. Consumer debt now is at $4.14 trillion. We have a booming economy. Why aren't people paying their debt off? Why, are, why aren't people making cash purchases? Because 25% of Americans now are living off of credit cards. Uh, people now uh, cannot afford everyday items. They're having to put it on credit cards. Uh, many people in America are living way uh, over their heads, way beyond their means and, and, and getting way into debt here. Um, but again, uh, this, cannot be sustained. This debt that uh, the average American is acquiring cannot be sustained. Uh, the average American keeps getting deeper and deeper into debt. We're seeing the middle class decimated. We're seeing people going into debt trying to stay in the middle class. Student loan and auto loans soared by $19 billion in August. The biggest monthly surge since August 2016. Most of this was auto payments people buying cars. And again, so many people being irrational, uh, careless, irresponsible, buying cars they can't afford. Um, it, it's, it's really going to have very uh, severe consequences for so many people because they needed to drive a certain car or they wanted a certain emblem to impress people. Um, you know, my advice is buy a used car, Buy, buy a car, not to impress people, but a car to get you where you got to go to your job, make money, save your money, put it in assets, put your cash away. Sales are coming. When these asset values reset, uh, there are going to be a lot of cars for sale. Remember, 7 million people now are 90 days plus delinquent on their auto payments. Imagine what you're gonna see 12 months from now. As, as of June, there was $1.6 trillion of student loan debt and $1.2 trillion of auto loan debt. This is absolutely insane. And when you look at what the average American is making in America, these people can never get out of debt. These, these people are gonna be slaves on the plantation um, until this whole thing blows up and then they're gonna be in really, really big trouble. Um, many people think that their debt's just gonna be forgiven when this whole thing blows up. There's no guarantee that didn't happen in 2008. Listen, you are going to witness the biggest wealth transfer the world has seen and they have been setting you up for years. So many people believe, uh, just say, uh, you know, you've been talking about this for years. People have been talking about this for years. You know, it's been 10 years since anything happened. Look, we just saw the biggest wealth transfer happen 10 years ago. And people just now just think that the next one should have happened already. 
It took years and years to blueprint this whole agenda to suck as many people into the housing market, into the stock market, to make you feel real good that everything's gonna be okay. This stuff doesn't happen overnight. They don't dupe everybody overnight. It takes years of fooling people. It took years to develop uh, the blueprints for this collapse. And it's gonna take years to get everybody or as many people they can into it before they pull the rug out. And I think they're getting very, very close to that point. They've duped so many people into buying cars, into buying real estate. They've duped so many people into the stock market uh, to buy these overvalued stocks, overvalued real estate, overvalued cars. Uh, people are debt slaves. And when they pull the rug out, they're not gonna forgive you. They're gonna take everything you have whether that's in the stock market, whether that's your house, that piece of property, that land, your car, they're gonna, they're gonna come and they're gonna take it. And people with debt are going to drown when this economic flood hits America. GE plans to offer $100,000 to former employees who haven't yet started collecting retirement benefits. The option of a lump sum, in effect, buying them out of the company's retirement obligations. Expect to see more of this in several states and corporations that both have, have acquired astronomical amounts of debt. Again, like New Jersey, uh, like Illinois, like California, and the list goes on and on. And like so many corporations who took all that cheap money are severely into debt, just like so many U.S. states. And what happens when the economy takes that massive turn for the worse? I'll tell you what's going to happen. It's going to be massive collapse for these corporations and it's going to be massive collapse for these states. The coming pension crisis, the coming pension nightmare is coming and it is not going to be stopped. Really good article today on King World News with Egren von Greers. I think he's probably one of the top metal guys, precious metals guys in the world. And I'm going to kind of paraphrase through the article here. And he made some really good points. What will happen when the markets crash? What happens to the asset management industry when the market loses 75% or more? People will buy the dips, he says. This will work for a limited time, but central banks will implode the derivative bubble by printing tens, even hundreds of trillions of dollars. For decades, central banks have been printing money out of thin air, as we all know, and told you that it had real value. And most of you, most of you people watching this know that it doesn't have real value, but the herds, the masses, the sheep believe that that fiat monopoly money does have value. The sheer weight of the debt will crash the global financial system. People will realize that all money printed, including debt, actually has zero value because when you issue debt out of, out of thin air, it must have zero value. Here is a big problem. If the debt and money printed have no value, neither does the assets that the debt financed. Think about that. It's all an illusion and reality is coming. If you attach a false value to debt or printed money, all the assets that were bought with this debt, like stocks, bonds, and property, will also have a false value. All these asset markets are completely overvalued. We don't know what the true value of these assets really are, but we will at some point when these markets collapse, when they lose control, when they no longer can prop them up, the real value of these assets are gonna be determined. Stocks will go into free fall against gold and lose 75 to 95% from current levels. This is imminent. A small minority will sleep well with having gold and silver, while the majority of the asset management industry are likely to have nightmares for years to come. Now, I know that's not most of you. Most of you watching this video are preparing. You're not gonna be having nightmares uh, you're going to be sleeping much better than the average person in America, the sheep, the herd, the brain dead, um, the masses. So I wanted to make it, this video today. It's a, it's a beautiful warm day here in the desert. And, you know, when the birds are out chirping, it's, the sun's out, beautiful blue skies. It's hard to really think anything bad is in the horizon. 
but don't be complacent and don't be fooled by what you're seeing on TV. Don't be fooled by what your friends are saying, um, what your associates are saying, what people at work are saying. Don't be fooled. Don't become complacent. This is coming. You know it. I know it. Without a doubt, it is imminent. Very uncertain times are coming to America. And I, I continue to reinforce that you are preparing every which way possible. But also remember, have balance in your life. Take a break. The end of the world is not coming, but tough times are. And if you're prepared for it, you're going to survive them. You're going to prosper in them and you're going to be okay. So keep saying your prayers, walk close to God, and just continue to prepare the best that you can. Don't be worried don't, uh, about being judged by other people. What other people think and say does not matter at this point. Continue to prepare, walk close to God. God bless every one of you. Talk to you very soon.